declare the committee meeting open on Tuesday the 26th of November at 5.31pm. I would like to advise that the committee meeting is being streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that any audio or visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used and disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring to outside Australia. I would also like to um, acknowledge that we're meeting on a traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and that we pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and we acknowledge they are continuing in accordance to the Ghana people of the today. We have an apology from the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor Sandy Rishaw. And we also have uh, on leave Councillor Abraham Zeta, which happens to be on his honeymoon. Uh, Councillor Moran's very late. Councillor Moran's very late. Which is on the Note that as well. Thank you. If I can have yeah. members move um, a confirmation of the minutes for meetings, three meetings, the 12th of the 11th, uh, 18th of the 11th, and the 19th of the 11th, 2019. Moved by Councillor Sims. Seconded by Councillor Knorr. Any variation or changes to those minutes? Excellent. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Those minutes are confirmed. Moving on to item four, discussion forum items. We have um, two items to discuss. Item 4.3 on waste management has been informed by administration at this stage. Which one? Item 4.3, oh. awaiting uh, further instructions and information. I'll ask, this, I'll ask you to quickly explain why it's going to be here. Through you, Chair. Only the, our presenter, Michelle, is unwell to that, so oh, she couldn't make it. Um, so she'll present next week. Thank you, CEO. Be nice to read it mysteriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, item 4.1, Adelaide Central Market Authority. Uh, we have a presentation uh, here. I'll hand over to the CEO. To make the following uh, introductions. Thank you. Yeah, through Chair, there are two presentations tonight, and it's your opportunity to hear from the chairs of the um, Central Market Arcade and also the Central Market Authority yeah. and uh, the RMA as well. And I just encourage you to ask questions as you need to or next take, get any clarification that you need as well. Um, the subsidiaries of Council are very important to us as an organisation, and each as a general manager, each has staff, each have their own board members. Um, and those board members are largely external um, and independent. And uh, we do have obviously one council member represented on each of them. Um, so they provide um, important, but I guess a different service to council. And um, I think it's really important that you understand and you hear from the chair directly so that you understand um, the year gone by and, and some of the challenges being faced by, by the entity. So uh, perhaps the Chair, if we can hand over to the, uh, to the Chair of the Authority. Thank you. Um, I'll hand over to you, uh, Nick, for presentation. You have 10 minutes, in which after that, Council members can ask questions of you. And Jody Watkins, well. Thank you, Chair. I'm wondering if uh, the lights at the back uh, where the screen is can be dimmed. And they can't. We can go. We can go. We can go fully dark if you like. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite intimate. You'll enjoy it. Um, You're gonna have to see our faces, which is sometimes. Yeah. Well, um, can we try it? Yes, you can try it. <laughs> sure. If I could have uh, someone please assist us, that's all right. maybe you can. Uh, that's Actually, um, can you turn the lights back on? <laughs> <laughs> because I can't read my notes. <laughs> oh, thank, really, thank you for yeah, that. That works. Um, thank you. Thank you for the indulgence. I know you were scared of the dark, Chet. <laughs> so I um, I have the uh, device here. So here we go. Um, so. We celebrate 150 years of fresh food retailing, and um, uh, this uh, gentleman here is uh, Stefan. He's uh, 85, and uh, whilst most places might have a bust of an individual, we actually have a cast of his nose, and um, um, it's 
uh, we took it off the wall and finding another place uh, for it right now. So we get uh, some nine and a half million, nine, nine million, seven hundred thousand visitations. And in effect, the market is Adelaide's uh, town square of, uh, of old. Almost uh, 1.3 million car park uh, uh, transactions and we receive about a million kilograms of fresh uh, uh, produce into the market every month uh, and this leads to two, two issues, one of uh, storage and uh, um, it, well that's been an issue for uh, 100 years. Um, maybe we can we'll get around to um, something soon, and also the unloading because uh, the unloading is all done uh, on the street uh, in the um, uh, early hours of the morning, and uh, it's important that it's actually done in public because this is what a market is. We're not a supermarket where everything's done and hidden away from uh, public uh, view. We received a uh, million and a half dollars worth of positive um, media coverage and while well, we're on social media, 52,000 uh, Facebook uh, likes and another 52,000 uh, uh, Instagram uh, uh, followers. We also have uh, our own uh, website and about one 1.1 million uh, views of, uh, of our page. We we distributed um, 16 uh, newsletters uh, to market lovers, and that is uh, to be able to connect with uh, people that have shown a uh, an intimate interest in what we're doing. And we've organised um, uh, 64 free uh, cooking demonstrations. Um, uh, this is, a, uh, and particularly in the community kitchen, um, to the right is uh, Fiona Roberts, who is co-author of, uh, of our book. Um, we've uh, invited um, uh, community groups, uh, so refugee groups, uh, the Italian community, they were in playing their accordion last week. Um, I think there's more than one accordion, but um, um, so what we're, um, uh, offering here is that uh, any community group can come and uh, use the community kitchen to celebrate a national day, uh, Independence Day, religious festival, whatever, because people connect uh, and connect significantly through uh, food. We we managed uh, three million dollars in um, uh, capital works, and uh, uh, the cooling project is uh, ready for. Or well, hopefully we're ready for summer and um, scheduled for insulation this weekend, um, wind uh, permitting. Um, if you've ever walked down uh, Grote Street, you know that it's a wind tunnel. Uh, Jodie's having palpitations every time she. on the wind comes this week. <laughs> Still, it's uh, planned and it's important uh, that uh, we uh, create a um, uh, a good environment for uh, for our customers and uh, and our traders. Uh, we we completed over a thousand maintenance tasks in a facility of this type uh, and of, of this age as always something uh, requiring uh, attention. So our one fiftieth uh, birthday celebrations included um, um, the book and. It uh, also included, um, uh, now that's the governor and um, Mrs. Lay, and um, I didn't choose this photo, um, but um, I'm socking it to the governor. Um, what he has in his hands are the central market socks available at the market office for or something like that. We uh, we also had um, uh, family day celebrations. This is about ensuring that um, uh, all segments of our society are, uh, are included. Uh, it's particularly important that we sell everything from uh, fish heads to crayfish because of the um, 
capability of people to be able to um, uh, purchase uh, the range of goods. The, um, the celebrations also included Time Travellers Feast and here we have second and third generation Alex and Otto from Barossa uh, Fine Foods. Otto is looking particularly proud. And they also, uh, the celebrations also included If the Stalls Could Talk, um, some uh, history and uh, that's uh, Richard Lambert in uh, 1958 uh, auctioning a side of lamb. I'd, uh, I don't think too many people today would um, uh, would be uh, participating in buying a whole uh, side of lamb. We, uh, we also uh, participated in Tasting Australia and we have uh, chefs uh, like on the right hand side, uh, Master Chef. Master Chef, you yes. And uh, uh, Brie uh, May. Our uh, customer experience events included uh, hot cross buns, and um, I think they go on sale about uh, the 2nd of January or something. Um, we organised um, NADOC uh, Art Week. Uh, again, um, we're an inclusive uh, market. The events also um, Bastille Day, for instance, attracted 100,000 people. Um, it was difficult sharing the uh, tower around to 150,000, but we managed. We um, also um, we had a uh, we got a regular event called Seafood and Sounds, and there the um, uh, the boys from uh, Sprout uh, Cooking Studio cooking up the uh, chili crab event. We, um, the regular Christmas uh, program, it's uh, interesting as to the, uh, the numbers uh, uh, of uh, product that sold over Christmas. Hard to uh, put your head around what 45 tonne of uh, cherries uh, looks like. Now, um, Franz, I, th I don't think that's you. It's on number one. It is. Oh, you recognise? Okay. Yeah. Um, interestingly, uh, on the on page two or three of the Australian Financial Review on the weekend, uh, um, Tony O'Connell was talking about uh, hands. Um, so um, it's a national publication. It's uh, interesting that um, uh, the Financial Review would choose the choose to come and get. Um, um, uh, a quote, extensive quote from uh, uh, a butcher at the Adelaide Central Market. So um, our customer events included uh, that we're participating in tourism in South Australia. Um, a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, um, Ainsley, on SBS uh, television, uh, Ainsley uh, Harriet, uh, who filmed earlier on in the year, um, his show, hour long, um, uh, where he cooked at the uh, central market was on and uh, I'm sure that if you um, go into uh, uh, your uh, Foxtel or whatever, you'll find uh, a repeat. Uh, interesting, our traders have uh, said that um, uh, they've picked, uh, picked up additional business just from uh, two screenings of, uh, of that. And that's uh, that's likely to go uh, well. It will go global. Uh, and on the um, on the right hand side here, so Lonely Planet published this book, um, the world's top 500 food experiences. And for market based food experiences, uh, our central market came in at number two. Number two. Now that's not good enough. We want to be number one. But uh, given that we're behind La Bucaria in Barcelona, I can probably live with that for a little longer. More of our customer experiences. We have the uh, producer in residence, which is uh, a three week uh, turnaround. Uh, and that's about um, uh, offering new and exciting experiences uh, uh, for our customers. And we've had 58 of them uh, since we initiated the program. 
and that's uh, Archie with her uh, curries, which apparently were quite a hit. And customer experience also included uh, adding additional dining room uh, uh, furniture. So this is in the uh, north eastern uh, corner where uh, we increased the seating capacity by 25%, and in the northwestern corner, another 20 uh, seats. And um, the more seats we have, the more that people will tend to linger and um, uh, and buy. Our customer experience also included um, uh, the community kitchen uh, refurbishment, and we engage, as I mentioned, we engage with over 30 community groups. And there, there's a, a bunch uh, from uh, Oz Harvest. Um, um, I'll give you some uh, uh, information as the number of meals uh, that were rescued. Um, uh, they do a uh, they do a fabulous uh, job. We um, uh, we've had uh, five new uh, traders and fit outs. Uh, so that's from uh, Turkish Delight, which actually started off as a producer in residence and then in due course graduated. And I think this this stall is uh, nine square meters. Yes. So nine square meters, yeah, it works. Um, um, we we had the um, House of Health, um, Central Organics, Marino Meat Store. I mean these these places and uh, are just as good as anywhere on the planet. Uh, and real falafel. Um, uh, relocated from a hole in the wall in the arcade to a decent stall in the market. Um, he's been so successful that the traders around have, been, have picked up uh, additional business. Uh, Mitch is, is Syrian and uh, he's um, quite a um, personality in his own right. And just to give you an indication of the um, the confidence that uh, that exists, uh, our traders have invested over three million dollars in fit out over the last uh, couple of years. Doesn't mean that everything's fine in retail land, but um, it's good that they're uh, that they're invested. So, uh, at, uh, we've supported uh, charities such as uh, the Big Issue and Oz Harvest, and there are the statistics. So, thirty-three thousand meals. Which um, have gone to a um, uh, to a good uh, cause. The community events uh, also, also we engaged over three thousand children and families part of the school uh, holiday uh, program. And I'll tell you who that is, but I've been told uh, we want to remain anonymous. But uh, the community events also included. Um, uh, the Burundi group by the Australian uh, Red Cross. Um, boy, did they make a. Um, they were vibrant in the uh, uh, in the market. Our other community events uh, included uh, uh, free cooking demonstrations and five uh, AA uh, doing community uh, broadcasts. We uh, also um, introduced bindi maps. So this is the we're the first retail site in South Australia to implement wayfinding technology, and oops, and um, over here oops, sorry about this. I'll get back again. So over here is Rachel Licker, who uh, um, is a media personality and singer, and she's with Ella. Uh, Ella is actually the dog, her dog. We, our community events also included the first of the um, Women's in Food Breakfast celebrating gender diversity of the market. And uh, from the left, we have uh, Jody, uh, we have Katie, who's also one of our, um, the other co author in the, uh, the book, uh, Michelle from Santas, uh, Karina actually from uh, Solopian Inn, and uh, Valerie. From uh, say cheese, we we organised uh, three million dollars of market uh, capital works, uh, which include um, um, these things. Uh, look a bit brutal, but well, the, these are the sign of the times. Um, the um, the tiling project, so. Uh, 
after we'd uh, dug up uh, to put the um, bollards in, um, it was an opportune time to put uh, the tiles where we actually, these are the original colours, so we, we were able to find the specs and, and come back on, uh, uh, on that. And um, uh, the fire services, so this is stuff that is uh, not in general view, but this is important stuff that uh, uh, behind the scenes that uh, makes uh, um, the market uh, compliant. So inclu uh, included in our capital works were the uh, facade restoration on both uh, uh, Gujra and uh, Grove Street. Um, I think uh, the uh, Great Street uh, Federal Hall uh, won the war. Um, and you might say, why is it Federal Hall um, rather than not the Market Hall or something? Um, that's because at the time uh, Australia was going through federation and uh, the federal government was uh, uh, dispensing funds to build uh, legacy projects and uh, this was one of them and hence it's called Federal Hall. So in upcoming we, um, we're participating in the plastic free precinct uh, uh, project, uh, uh, the pilot uh, we have um, uh, those uh, six traders who are uh, participating and this is really about um, a phase out of single-use uh, plastic products over time, and uh, that is that's the, that storm is the uh, from the House of Health. So our upcoming events, uh, we've got uh, uh, those, and that's uh, in the middle there. That's Daniel with something from uh, something wild, and so if I look uh, forward to. The, uh, what we consider as uh, major issues for 2020 and beyond. Um, uh, one is uh, voluntary Sunday trading and uh, we're trialling, well, we're having um, conversations with our traders about what, what are we going to do because it's not going to be another trading day like every other, every other trading day. Um, one of the, um, one of the options being uh, considered is that it's uh, Sunday morning only and that uh, it's a different demographic that we'd be targeting. Uh, it would, it would uh, likely to be uh, families and uh, so uh, we make it into a family day. Um, that would also then give our traders the opportunity to have uh, Sunday afternoons off to um, um, be with, uh, with family. The other one, of course, is the development, uh, the redevelopment of the uh, arcade, um, and uh, we're already having and have been having conversations with um, uh, administration about how um, we can strengthen um, tra uh, the traders for what is probably going to be three years of construction and disruption, and how we can bolster their. Um, their trade so that um, uh, it's not as, it's going to be difficult, but it, is, but it can be less difficult. Um, so we're doing, um, we're doing that uh, as well. So, and the last thing is, I'll leave you with a short um, happy video. So, go. Thank you.
thank you. Uh, and do you have any questions? And by the way, if if you think of if you have a question and you, you wake up in the middle of the night, um, don't ring me. But uh, ring me the next day. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, just a, a couple of areas. Um, uh, the most important first. There's a lot of comment about. Uh, uh, the Santa Claus disappearing from the side of the market and speculation that he's actually been destroyed and there's a cover-up going on. Um, can you assure us that Santa is coming back? At, uh, um, it, it's in Adelaide now. Um, if I could put it in human terms, he's got arthritis. Um, uh, when he was constructed 85 years ago, it wasn't envisaged that he'd be still around. And so when we, uh, he's, he's alive and kicking, it's just in storage. He's a plate. I'm sorry? The plate, the symbol. He's disassembled, that's, uh, that's correct. And remembering that um, um, the sort of timbers that we used were um, radio pine, and radio pine, when it's under stress, uh, and he has a 10 year life. Um, it's the same sort of thing that we find that uh, uh, when we uh, refurbish a stall uh, in the market uh, that uh, we have to go back to the uh, bare concrete. So we're having conversations with the administration about that, but uh, there, there's no plot. He's not off to the Ukraine or anything like that. And, and he will be back next year. Yeah, he will be. Okay. Now the other question, um, uh, equally serious, is about the central market arcade redevelopment, which everybody's been told will begin in September next year. You say you're planning talking to traders about it. I mean, how serious do you think that disruption will be uh, to car parking, to the street traffic, and to footfall in the market? Well, if you, if you think that um, what happens when the pageant's on, that uh, retail is in, and that's it rings the city now. Um, um, one of our uh, directors uh, um, manages the arcade, uh, the city arcade, and um, uh, sorry, the Adelaide arcade. And he um, uh, he say he says that uh, the trade is in about forty five percent. Now the the difficulty that we have is that if you're going to have disruption, we'll have two hundred and sixty less car parks. Um, if it's too hard for people to get in, then what they tend to do is build um, uh, other food pathways. And then when the work is done, we have to somehow or other be able to encourage them to come back. Now, not everyone's going to come back because if they, if they find somewhere else that's more convenient and build a relationship, uh, then we may never see them. And just one supplementary question to that. At present, um, uh, there are uh, talks about reduced rent in the arcade. Are you contemplating reducing rent for traders in the central market? Uh, no. There might be. Uh, we're having convers. We we will in due course uh, once an announcement is made and we have an understanding of the um, timelines. Um, then we can have conversations about. In general, this it, the cutting costs is one thing, but it's actually building the business. Well, that's why I keep saying that we need to be doing things with your support that are about building the, um, the infrastructure or other things so that um, uh, we can continue to encourage our customers to come in. Because if all you're doing is offering um, uh, a cut in costs, um, that won't help because you'll come back next week and want another car and another car. So how, how can we make sure that our traders build the business, build their business in the time that they have? Now we've had um, uh, conversations about what, the, what those things might look like. Um, the the uh, ACMA board is um, uh, actively preparing a, uh, and has prepared and we're prioritising this and we'll be having conversations with uh, administration about the, uh, the sort of things that might, might be possible. Um, Can I just be blunt? Are you anticipating that you might need financial assistance from council? Uh, well, um, as, um, 
as a subsidiary, we have a budget. Uh, our budget is around uh, certain things. Um, if we want to do certain things that are beyond the budget, then we'll come to the parent and say, these are the these are the range of the additional uh, capital works or, or whatever, and it'll probably be mainly the capital works. If you um, if you go back, if I can take you back to the slide that said that we get a million kilos of fruit and veg a month. Now, uh, we need to be able to, um, uh, uh, where we're going to unload it, for instance, when there's a, uh, a hole next door, because right now the trucks are lined up along uh, uh, parallel to Coles, and they're lined up on the other side parallel to all those uh, shops. So we have, to th we, we have to put our thinking caps on as to how we're going to uh, solve that. And, um, uh, what about uh, additional uh, cooling facilities? Is it possible uh, with, um, you know, we've got a bit of a chess game here, we can we move this over here, move that over there, we might be able to put this here. Um, does that answer part of your question? Uh, part of it, yeah. Which part haven't I answered? There's a bit of that, but we may ask council for additional funds. Oh, well, of course. Yeah. Because we don't, we, uh, we don't have any reserves, sir. And please can we have some more? Thank you. Thank you, Chair Councillor Sims. Well done, Councillor Martin. And uh, thank you, uh, Nick, for your um, presentation. Um, I, uh, I was interested in the comments about um, the Sunday uh, training and the voluntary nature of that. Can you explain in a bit more detail how advanced those discussions are with traders and how you would ensure that people are not compelled to have to participate? Yep. The, um, the way in which people uh, shop now has changed. Uh, Sunday is now the second largest uh, trading day uh, of the week. Um, for us to change our core trading hours, we need a 75% uh, positive uh, vote. Um, what, uh, so uh, that's, dare I say, that's not going to happen. Um, what we do have is a, a significant number of traders prepared to give it a, to give it a trial, and no one is being forced to participate. There are those that might decide that um, they're okay and they not uh, uh, that they'll they'll give it a miss. Uh, there'll be those that uh, decide that um, um, uh, the people who are coming in on a, if we target it correctly, the people who are coming in on Sunday and not the people that are coming in on uh, on a Friday or a Saturday or any other day. So this would be a completely different uh, market segment. And um, if we're able, if those traders are able to make a buck, then what we'll see is, uh, over, for instance, over time, Wednesday was, an, and still is an optional uh, trading day, and now we get something like about 85% of the of our uh, traders open because they're uh, uh, they're making a buck. So when we're not about forcing anyone, we're we're dare I say uh, leading, um, uh, and if uh, we can lead the horse to water, hopefully they can drink. So how thank you, councillors. I need to uh, put a stop to this. We're running. We've already taken about forty-five minutes into this presentation. So if it's any urgent questions relating to the presentation, well, just to, clar just to clarify, and then I'll, I'll, I'll and, and you can catch see. up with me later. Just, just keen to know how many businesses have said they're interested in participating, and will this be up and running in twenty twenty, or what's the time frame? Oh, well, the time frame is uh, uh, when the uh, festival infringes on. Which is a busy time. Everyone is out and about. The weather's, the weather's appropriate, and I think the number that we've had that have indicated is about twenty-five. Yeah, at the stage, but we're still going through consultations. We've got information sessions being held at the moment with the traders, but you know, open forum, question and answer. So. so that's about a third at this point in time. Thank you. Which is which is uh, in line with. Actually, it's better than when Wednesday option trading was uh, mooted. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Members, is there any burning questions that need to be asked? Okay, yeah, there is none. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. No, thank, thank you, you Councillors, and I remain available for any questions.
is uh, out of session. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, members will uh, move on to item 4.2, Rundle Moore Management Authority highlights presented by Chairperson Peter Joy. I think he's joined also by the General Manager, Tony Lewis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Can we turn the lights up for this one? <laughs> Good. Um, let me remind you or just show you uh, what we're going to talk about. We're going to discover off the strategy. We're in the third year of a uh, five year strategy. A few highlights of uh, 1819, uh, some next steps, key challenges, and opportunities. Um, we've got a really simple strategy, and that is uh, three prongs. We're going to attract more people. We want them to stay or dwell longer in the space, and we want them to enjoy the experience. There are sort of, you can see, four supporting activities or strategies around that. Um, one that I've been personally really hot on is understanding our customers. In other words, gathering better information about uh, how they get in, what they do. The visitor experience is really important to their enjoyment. Um, the brand is also a key aspect of that to ensure that we are the most appealing um, space and retail um, opportunity within the state. And advocacy is also a really key part. We have a very diverse stakeholder group and uh, there's a number of issues that we have to advocate for on their behalf. So let me take you through a couple of 18, 19 highlights. Firstly, in keeping in that pattern, um, information is really important. I, I think it's important to realise that uh, the Rundlemore precinct is in, in, um, increasingly complex space. Um, you know, Nick talked about disruption. I mean, you're all very conscious of the fact that Gall Place, uh, is, which is a very central uh, part of the precinct, has been uh, and is still disrupted. Um, and it affects not only car parks, but you can see we're dealing with 700 retailers, 300 non-retail businesses who pay the levy, uh, 5,000 retail and office employees coming and going, changing their roles. Uh, 145 different property owners and managers, uh, 15 arcades and centres with their own brands and directions. Um, you know, I think if you'd spend any time in the mall, you would have seen that the minute a shop becomes vacant, it's uh, occupied. Uh, this uh, very low vacancy in the mall, which is not typical uh, of other centres. We've, uh, in conjunction with the City of Adelaide, put in place a new CRM program. This is part of understanding and part of our information. In other words, if we don't know our stakeholders, their roles, how do we communicate with them and how do we get relevant information to them? On the other side of that, I am fastidious and Joe is too about understanding our customers. We are unlike any other retail precinct in the state, if, if not uh, in Australia, in as much as our biggest audience are in fact the 110,000 people who come in to work in the city each day. Now, uh, Norwood Parade and uh, Burnside or any other shopping centre does not have an audience like that. They are mainly there catering to people shopping who are living in surrounding suburban areas. We also have the lion's share, we have 85,000 students coming into the city, a number you'd be familiar with. They are people buying things in the precinct. Um, half of our, our audience is uh, sort of shoppers. We have residents, uh, which accounts for the growth of supermarkets and the viability of supermarkets in the city. We have a high number of tourists uh, at any one time. There's a, you know, when people visit the city, they end up in a place like Runnell Mall. Um, and we have an, uh, the other group is mainly people who are attending events, coming in uh, for different reasons other than shopping. Um, the important part of that is this is the most visited place in the state, 24 million visits a year. Um, half of them uh, come in to shop. We know these people pretty well. We know what they like. We um, uh, you know, work with retailers to share understanding of their behaviours. 
Um, but the big opportunity for us going forward is, in fact, the city worker market. Um, only about 20% of workers um, shop in the mall, but there is an opportunity to grow that. Um, the visitor experience is, uh, you know, it's a bit obscured up there, but you know, I, I only came across this fact uh, in the last couple of months. Run the mall management and the team that Joe uh, uh, runs put on 471 events in the mall every year. An incredible achievement when you think about it. And part of it is to enhance and build this visitor experience. Some of them are major events like Vogue Festival and Christmas that we're all very aware of. But there's things like pop-ups, pirate life, there's all sorts of little things that still require management and organisation. Um, but they attract people and they keep the vibrancy of the space alive. Um, we also have a number, and uh, this is in constant evolution, of brands that are not available in the suburbs. And this is a key driver of them all, and that is that if you're going to have one of these key brands in place, the best place to have it is in Runnell Mall. It is the premier shopping precinct. Um, and if a brand comes to the state, then uh, they we encourage them to start off at very least in the mall. Um, and we've done that successfully. And the reason is this attracts people to the mall. Um, if you can't get these brands in the suburbs, this is why they will come to the city and make the effort, pay for the parking, etc. You know, there's a growth in busking and street arts, which is really important in vibrancy. We often believe we've, we're managing a public space as much as a shopping precinct, and adding to the enjoyment of that space is really uh, important. Um, uh, another part of that uh, equation is safety and security. Um, safety and security is paramount. Uh, we work very closely with uh, our own uh, Wilson security people, council, but also SAPOL in ensuring that uh, that space with the largest number of people concentrated in it is safe uh, for everyone to, to visit and use. Um, so we work uh, very closely with council in that respect. Um, let me just move on. Um, I think in terms of, did I just flip through one? I did. Um, advocacy, as I said, is really important. We've faced the, the bad prospect of uh, the state government changing trading hours on our busiest day, Boxing Day, making it available in the suburbs. Boxing Day traffic, I think, uh, was down about 11% or something, which is, uh, which is not bad, but the one of the most interesting thing is we believe that that probably would have occurred because, uh, as you will see in the next few days, Black Friday is becoming a major shopping uh, uh, event in people's lives. Makes a lot of sense. People are coming in prior to Christmas, buying things on sale rather than um, after after Christmas when they don't really need them. Uh, coming in and exchanging gift cards. It's a very, it, it, Nick talked about the fact that there is some changes in consumer behavior going on, and this is one of them, the online click and collect thing. Uh, I should point out that um, uh, Black Friday last year was our second busiest day, I think, next to Boxing Day. So Boxing Day is still big, but that's a click and collect online sales event, and it attracted um, hundreds of thousands of people to the mall. Um, we also um, we talk about disruption. Um, I mean, we live with disruption, um, and I've got to hand it to council in this respect. I think we've worked incredibly well with council to minimise disruption, not only uh, for Gawler Place, which has been uh, a challenge, but we quickly forget the North Terrace tram development um, uh, was also very disruptive at the time. Uh, had a major effect on traffic flows uh, in and out of the mall. So um, I th there's lots of other bits and pieces, but you know, 10 gigabyte and NBN and having lots of people digging up pavement is also incredibly disruptive. But the essence of that has been communication. I think uh, almost daily communication with retailers and businesses affected. We've also worked, uh, brand is one of our fundamental platforms. We've created a new visual identity. You can see it sort of sitting down the bottom of that slide. 
it's 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 hardly new in a way. It's um, it, it's symbolic of what Rummel Mall is. Uh, just like the Eiffel Tower is for Paris, um, the Mall's balls is iconic. Um, we've gone back, uh, we're using it, there's no big campaign behind it. It is simply a refresh of um, what we stand for. So it's new visual ident identity that we're applying to those events that we run and manage. Um, Nick claimed a, a lovely uh, dollar amount on um, PR. We, we've generated $5.4 million worth of PR. Uh, in the last 12 months. Uh, we've got a very active website, social media presence, and it's all to do with retail, what's going on in the mall. The events feed this activity, new brands feed it, and if you're walking to run the mall when Mecca opened or H&M, you'll see that it attracts a lot of attention and it's fundamental to what we do. Um, in terms of quick uh, analysis of next steps and some key projects, you will have seen that Christmas has been installed. There's a campaign that uh, just launched uh, last week. There's a lot of social media around Christmas and involving people in the windows and the decorations. There's a gift guide um, involving 250 retailers. Uh, we're talking about trading hours and uh, also it's, it's our first expression of, uh, of the brand. As I mentioned in the last couple of things, uh, Black Friday is important to us. We're enlisting the cooperation with all of the retailers um, in, in making the most of this. It's, it's moved from a day event to a week event. Boxing Day is still quite critical. Uh, you might have seen the announcement that the Adelaide Festival uh, Dolls House is going to be under the call of Canopy, a great event, a lot of um, interest in that. Fringe is, is always a key time of the year. We get a lot of activity, a lot of people, a lot of buskers coming to the mall, adding to the vibrancy. Um, there are two areas that we're working on uh, really that are fundamental. One is a uh, food strategy. We still don't have the after hours dynamism that a lot of other cities do have. And a lot of that is to do with having the right restaurants and food offerings. And also in winter, things are quiet. Uh, we need to find ways to activate the space in winter, where, despite the fact that it's dark, cold, and potentially wet. Um, tourism is, uh, is, is fundamental. I, as I said, I think uh, we not only get our fair share of cruise ships, but uh, we um, are a place that is visited by people visiting the state. It's the sort of thing we all do when we go interstate or overseas. We end up in the key shopping precinct of that place. Um, Gold Place uh, is very close to completion, been on time, really well managed. Um, and it will be great to have that um, uh, online. Just finally, just a couple of uh, challenges and opportunities we're facing. Um, it's, it's really important. Our biggest threat has been online, as most retail precincts would have observed. We've stabilised our market share. We are not losing business to online um, over the last period. Um, and we continue to attract interest from international and unique retail brands uh, who come to run the mall um, as a first location. Um, one of the things I'm really keen, uh, you know, there is a master plan in place. Uh, that master plan talks about laneways. Um, while we can easily rest on having done up the mall and called place, the next step is to think about those laneways as distinct brands and offerings within uh, the precinct. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, we're working on a range of really innovative, fascinating uh, winter strategies that we'll share with you as they uh, come off. Um, we're really keen to lift up the whole dining and bar offering in the precinct. Um, and most importantly, and to some extent we provoke this, uh, we would like to contribute as much as we can to the development of the citywide business strategy. And the reason is we have this great capability. Um, we, as I said, if you're running 470 events, you can run them in Melbourne Street or whatever. And we, we know that we have a capability to do this much better. Joe and her team um, have been terrific. It's a stable group of uh, people, highly talented, 
really brilliant uh, event managers and also the board uh, made up of, it's a skills-based board, so there's a lot of marketing skill on that board. Um, and we're really looking forward to the opportunity to contribute uh, to that strategy in any way we can. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, councillors, would you like to ask any questions of the chair or the general manager? Excellent. Thank you very much for your presentation. I appreciate your presence here today with us. Um, Councillor Moran, welcome. Just to give you a quick update, we are um, item 4.3 waste management has been withdrawn from the agenda because the presenter um, can't be with us here today to present. So just thought I'd let you know. I know I thought that would upset you, but. Uh, Item 5.1, temporary use of public space policy. Uh, members, we have a, a recommendation before us. Councillor Sims, are you moving as recommended? I'm uh, moving a variation. Do we have... Uh, I did email it around, hopefully you've received it. Um, is it. It's exactly the same as printed, Second. but with a new... So just to be clear, sorry, Councillors. So Councillor Sims is moving a variation that's currently on the screen. Councillor Martin has seconded that variation. So, Councillor Sims, you can speak. Thanks, uh, Chair. Look, um, the purpose of uh, this variation is to um, include um, a reference to uh, public space and the ownership of public space in particular, uh, with a new guiding principle one. Um, it could be titled public space for the public good. Uh, you'll see the wording I put in there, public space in the city of Adelaide belongs to the people of Adelaide and all South Australians and should be used for the public good. I think it's really important to establish that principle straight off in um, a policy document such as this. I think that's the foundation principle that public space does belong to all of us and any activation should be in the public interest. And then stemming off from that are the other um, important principles which I don't have an issue with. But um, I think it's very important we make it clear who owns public space and what we consider to be um, its core focus. Excellent. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Is that my right? Councillors, would you like to add any remarks? Be it that there is none, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Summed up. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, all those against, that is carried. Moving on to item 5.2, governance structure, the River Torrens, um, Karawira Parry. So members, we have a also a recommendation before us um, for councillors to consider, and then I would ask for a mover. Moved by councillor Martin, seconded by councillor Kuros. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak? Reserve my right. Councillor Kuros, councillor Sims. I just had a question um, on this one. I had a look through, thank you for the um, report. I had a look through the um, attachment A, I think it was, that mentions the, the organisations that are going to be involved. There was some talk about this a little while ago, I think it was in a media story, about a structure that was being set up that involved a series of the business interests along the River Torrens, of the casino, a range of other players. That is this replacing that, or is this a separate? What's the what's the status of the two, and where is that concept at? Through through the chair, it's a different um, proposal. This is to manage the river as river as a whole entity. Um, the governance structure you're referring to is REPAC. I think I got that right. Which is um, people like the casino, uh, Adelaide Festival. Um, the organisations along the Riverbank precinct. So, so just to separate the two councils, what we're dealing with tonight is purely the river itself yes. and the councils associated. What you're referencing to is a, I guess, a, under the Minister's portfolio, uh, that structure, which is a separate arrangement altogether. Right. Well, look, I, I support this uh, structure and the other one I think is not good, um, but uh, we're not dealing with that tonight. So I'll um, pick that fight when it comes. Councillor Martin, to sum up. Sure. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Item 5.3, members, I have a recommendation for your approval. Uh, if I can have someone move that, please. Moved by Councillor Martin. Can I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Kuros. Two in a row. Martin Kuros. 
Sorry about that. Uh, would you like to speak, Councillor Martin? Um, With regards to the motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Um, uh, no, I reserve my right. Excellent. Councillor Kiros. Councillors, be it that there's none, back to you, Councillor Martin. Some no. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against, that is also carried. Then we're moving on to item um, 5.4, Rymel Car Park. We also have a recommendation before you to note and authorise, moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Kuros. <laughs> Not going to say anything. Would you like to speak, Councillor Martin? Uh, I'm right. Councillor Kuros. Would you like to speak? Members, anyone else? Councillor Martin, to sum up. No, no. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Move on to item 5.5. We'll also have a recommendation before us to approve and to note. Um, moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Donovan. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak? Councillor Donovan. Uh, Moran. Members? Be it that there's none, I'll go back to Councillor Moran. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against, that is carried. Moving on to item 5.6. Members, you have a recommendation before you to approve. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Kuros. Very bold, Councillor Sims. Reserve, That's reserve right. right. Councillor Kuros. Reserves your right. Uh, any other councillor? Back to you, Councillor Sims. I will. Before I put that to the vote, um, congratulations on the work for the staff that you've put into this. This has been an incredible piece of work over the last couple of years. It is greatly appreciated and it's a significant uh, milestone and achievement for you. So thank you very much. Thank you for it. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Thank you very much. 5.7, Councillor Kira. Um, would you like to move that? Seconded by Councillor Sims. Councillor Kerr, would you like to speak? Uh, just to uh, just say that this is a, uh, it's been a, a good, efficient uh, and practically minded uh, program put together by the administration. I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'll just point out, uh, councillors, the spend is 18,018. So just in perspective, that uh, that is one fortieth, uh, one fortieth of the spend on Splash Adelaide for this year. Um, I think it is value for money. This will be a, a direct targeted uh, um, uh, subsidy towards uh, what has been a clear market failure, what has been identified by local musicians, and I think the bang for buck uh, will be extremely good. So I, I do recommend it. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Councillor Sims. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Look, I support this also. Um, it is very costly, um, but I think it's um, <laughs> money uh, worth spent. Um, and money worth spending, um, money well spent. Um, you know, and I think uh, when we deal with these kind of market failures, as Councillor Cure has identified, um, it is appropriate for Council to spend big, as we are doing um, on the basis of his proposal. So, no, I'm supportive of this and um, I encourage others to make an investment. Thank you, Councillors. Any other remarks? Be it that there's none, back to you, Councillor Cure, to sum up. Sunday. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Thank you. Moving on to item 5.8, Minister Report on Future Use and Status of Lot 14. Councillor Martin, to move. I'm moving um, an amendment. Okay, so do we have that? Or a very variation? Uh, yeah. Your second thing? Let me just get that on the board first, on the wall first, and I'll, I'll have that second in there. Yes, it goes at the end of three. Um, if we remove the full stop from the end of three and add the words but opposes the lease of any part of the site for an hotel. A hotel. Uh, and is the correct grammar. You can have A if you like. Uh, a hotel and a hotel um, to host events or offer accommodation or the construction of any residential apartments to be offered for sale. Uh, 
So seconded by yeah. any other changes, Councillor? That's it. Councillor Sims, you're seconding this. <coughs> Councillor Martin, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, look, um, I uh, I would have um, preferred the motion of Council on August 10, 2009, which proposed, according to the papers at page 112, supports the return of the entire site to a community space. Um, but we have lost that. That uh, uh, has been a battle, but the state government has, and successive state governments, um, have uh, have won that. Um, but we still have some fight in us, I think, and it's incumbent on us to attempt to protect the parklands from uh, commercial development. Now, this amendment is absolutely consistent with the position that the council took on the development of the Adelaide Oval Hotel, uh, which is being constructed as we speak, by the way. They're working night and day to finish that. This is absolutely consistent with our opposition to the Adelaide Oval Hotel. Um, and, uh, quite apart from the, uh, the, the principle of protecting the parklands, um, the Lord Mayor, and I remember you as well, Chair, arguing strongly that any hotel attached to a parklands venue, like in the case of the Oval Hotel, would compete with existing offerings of hotels offering food, beverage and accommodation. And I remember you arguing, Chair, that this was not an acceptable position. Now, if there were to be a hotel on this site, then it would compete with the offering that's available in the city. In the troubled East End, which has never fully recovered from that closure of the Royal Adelaide, and most particularly to new developments. And right now, as we speak, not 24 hour a day construction, but construction is con continuing on that site in Rome Street where Crown, Crown Hotel has invested millions and millions of dollars in creating a hotel that will offer events, which will offer accommodation. And this is the key point, will pay rates to the city of Adelaide. If there is a hotel on the parklands, there will be no rates. If there are apartments offered for sale, there is the principle established that the parklands can be developed for residential use. Now, they are very, very strong positions. Um, and positions, I might add, that every council prior to this one has taken. And you, Chair, will remember the previous Lord Mayor, Martin Hazy, saying there will be no apartments on the parklands. So we need to rule this out now. We need to say it in clear language to the government. It is entirely consistent with the position that we've taken on the Adelaide Ho Oval Hotel and on residential apartment development on the parklands. Um, it is, in terms of the overall effect of this motion, um, fairly minor, but it is a very major point that we need to be making to the government still to this day. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, uh, Councillor Martin, for putting this forward. I think this is a very important principle for us to uh, establish. Um, I remember being back on the previous council when the discussion um, about this site was unfolding, and I remember the discussion we had at that time about calling on the state government to return this land back to parklands. And unfortunately, they didn't um, accede to that request. But what we must do, I think, um, is rule a line in the sand when it comes to carving up the parklands, privatising public space and uh, allowing penthouses on the parklands. I think the concept of having luxury apartments on that site, which I know has been talked about, um, the government has floated that prospect previously, I think would set a very, very dangerous precedent um, for the city of Adelaide and for our public space. And we really need to knock that on the head and say that we're not going to see our parklands carved up and sold off in that way. And um, I also think it's important to um, advocate for local businesses in the area and for their interests. And um, I think it's important, as Councillor Martin has uh, stated, that we don't want a hotel on the site that's going to be hosting events or offering accommodation. We know that businesses in the area are struggling. Some people are saying that the East End is looking like a ghost town at the moment. We've got a lot less foot traffic there. 
The last thing that those businesses need is more competition coming um, in the form of a hotel or an event space um, that's going to be in direct competition to their business. So this is an important principle to get in this document and um, I encourage all councillors to support it. Yeah, thank you, councillor. Councillors, anyone like to speak? I may make a quick comment if uh, that's okay before I pass on to Councillor Martin to sum up. So just to clarify, I know Councillor Martin has uh, stated my position. And my position with regards to the opposition of the Oval Hotel was because of the gifting of the land and the gifting of the money to construct the hotel. There were predominantly two reasons for me why I felt there was an, an unfair advantage to be given to one operator over another. Uh, my position remains on this site and the reason why I didn't support any residential apartments offered at the time of the previous council is because that was still interfering in a residential market. So I have no problems myself opposing that. With regards to the hotel, I don't know what the state government has in the way of plans. I think everything that we've seen from a master planning perspective focuses on a startup space center, uh, has a focus on uh, entrepreneurship, education. These are the things that have been sort of floated publicly. Um, I don't know, um, I don't think they should require for a hotel to be set up on site when there is a lot of hotels in the East End that are either built or being built to support the site. The biggest issue for me remains, I am happy to, I speak in favour of this motion, um, the biggest issue for me remains uh, is government should not be providing incentives um, and interfering in the market when the demand and the supply is there. Uh, and I think that is fundamentally the issue for me uh, when it comes to this. So on this site specifically, um, I'm happy to maintain my position with regards to what I supported previously and by not supporting residential apartments and having council's position maintained um, uh, also, I mean, I would go stronger by what we requested this before. This site needs to be rateable. Um, I don't know how the government, until this day, uh, are not allowing for the City of Adelaide to rate the site. Um, and I think that's something the CEO is still working on, I believe, if you'd like to comment. Yeah, through you, Chair, I can say that we've been having productive conversations with um, the state government. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to bring back some information to Council in the new year. Mm -hmm. um, I must say that. Um, um, the site um, is, is important from an integration point of view with the, the city as a whole. And I think that um, the servicing of the site and the payment of rates is a key consideration. And it's one that is being um, received receptively by um, the entity that's, um, that's overseeing Block 14. So I'm optimistic in the new year of bringing back some information to Council on that. Thanks. Thank you very much, um, councillors. And look, with that, uh, for me, I mean, the bigger issue with this as well uh, is also providing commercial spaces um, in non-commercial terms. Uh, also sucking, uh, we're talking about a significant amount of vacancies in the City of Adelaide when it comes to A, B, C, I mean, A, A's and that, but B, C, D, great buildings. And if the government is basically providing free tenancies for people to occupy those sites or near free, I'm, heard, I'm hearing that it's not the case, but that is also a concern of mine that that site should not be used to deter people from renting in the city and moving on to Rockford's then because they're getting peppercorn rent purely for the purpose of filling the site. So I think these are all things that need to be considered. Uh, but look, I'm, I'm happy to support this motion, Councillor, and I'll put it back to you. No, thank you for that, Chair. Um, you, look, I, I agree entirely with what you're uh, saying additionally. Um, and one of the troubling things is that on the most recent maps of uh, Lot 14 Master Plan, there are four sites which are so, shown simply as white boxes. Um, that is to say, no use has been determined for. Uh, and I think in that circumstance, it is important for this council to say, well, look, we don't want anything in there that's going to compete with our commercial businesses in the city, particularly hotels. We don't want function centres in hotels. We've got enough of those. Hotels are struggling. And we certainly want to establish the principle that no residential apartment should be offered for sale on the parklands. Um, God knows there are enough of them in the city. In fact, I was talking to uh, the proprietor of one uh, hotel uh, and apartment block today, uh, and it is open, uh, and only 50% of a key section of that apartment building has been sold. 50%. So this is a strong message on behalf of our right players, and I commend it to you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? 
all those against, that is unanimous. Chair, may I ask that that be noted in any communication with the government, that council unanimously oh, or committee? I, that's why I've noted it. Yep, thank thank you. You. Usually otherwise it won't be noted. Thank so. you. Exclusion item 7.1, we have an order to Could we go to six first, Chair? Sorry, sorry. Which one six? Council member items. Oh, oh yes, I always forget that one. That's the most fun thing. Sorry, it's not on my uh, papers, so it's in the beginning notes. It doesn't appear in the index, so that's why. But uh, so I'll go back. It is in the uh, in the index. So sorry, item six, council member discussion forum. So Councillor Martin, I think you'd like. Oh to yes, see. thank you, Chair. Um, look, I, I I wanted to raise that. Uh, when I unfolded my newspaper on Saturday morning, I read that the advertiser can exclusively reveal that Adelaide-based commercial and general has been chosen by the Adelaide City Council to breathe new life into the empty land at 88 O'Connell Street. And it included quotes from uh, one of the apparent proponents, Chase Crown, whose director said, the bid was anchored by South Australian icon Thomas Foods with four buildings ranging in height from three to 15 storeys. Then it quoted um, uh, that this person said there would be apartments and retail offering. Uh, and then it quoted another apparent proponent, Starfish Developments Managing Director, who went on to say that it included two main buildings rising up to 14 storeys comprising apartments, hotel, restaurants, uh, retail, townhouses. Now, as a consequence of that report, um, I have, and I think Councillor Moran has, been inundated with requests from residents for information. Um, and, and specifically, they're asking me, you know, what happened to our guiding principles? Because they say, if you believe the advertiser, um, then, our guiding principles gone up the window. Uh, we, we were proposing a predominantly two-storey O'Connell Street scape, um, a, a mid-rise development of up to uh, eight storeys. Um, they're wanting to know, uh, and in fact, one restaurateur said to me, well, hang on a minute, uh, the paper's saying restaurants, we can't afford any more restaurants in O'Connell Street, we're all going broke as it is. And then I had another retailer say to me the same thing. I thought you were going to do something that was complimentary to retail. And then I had another ratepayer say to me, well, what did you approve? And I had to say, well, that's in confidence. And the answer was, that's crap. I read it in the paper. So uh, what I want to say is it is time for council to come clean. It is not good enough to treat ratepayers like mushrooms. They need to have access to the information that they think they're being denied. If the advertiser can print such detailed information, uh, it is not unreasonable for them to say, well, what, what are you doing? If, if you've knocked back 15 stories, is there 18 or 20 going there? Where are the restaurants going? What kind of restaurants are they going to be? You know, it is, well, uh, Councillor Sims is uh, as concerned as I am. But, we must lift that, um, that confidentiality order uh, that applies to elected members and it is time for the ratepayers to understand what council has or has not decided in relation to ADA O'Connell Street and who voted for what. Thank you, councillor, for noting that. Any other councillor would like to note anything to the purpose of the meeting? Excellent. So we'll move on. Moving on to item 7.1, we have an order to exclude the public with regards to item 8.1, Munter Street funding. If I could have someone move, um, thank you, thank you Councillor Canole, seconded by Councillor Gross. Members, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Uh, members uh, of the public, um, media and also staff that are not directly related to that topic, if they could please leave the room, at which after we'll also switch off the audio-visual recordings and we'll close the door to convene and deal with item 8.1.
Yeah, can we see the department of corrections? Members, with that, I declare the meeting closed at 6.56pm and I thank you for your attendance.